All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Marshall W. Allworth Planetarium. My name is Jessica. Um, I am the director and will be your tour guide to the June sky. Um, so since we're in the first Wednesday of the month, um, we're going to be taking a look at this month's sky. I'll tell you the things that you can expect to see in it. Um, a few of the stories and just, you know, fun astronomical events for the month of June. Um, now, if you have any questions throughout the show, feel free to just ask. Um, if you need to leave at any time during the show, you're welcome to do so. You'll exit through the same door you came out. I will close that door right after I get done with all of this. Um, it does get dark in here, so be careful as you're finding your way out. But that's why we have the glow strips around the edge of the walls. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I have for now. So I'm going to get the door closed and head to the back, and we'll get started. All right. Now, as I said, our show tonight is looking at the June sky and all of the fun things that we can see in it. Um, so we currently have set up for right now a um, little bit nicer weather probably in the dome right now than it has been outside. Um, love being able to control that. It doesn't rain in my dome. but. Since we are getting, you know, further into spring, closer to summer, our days are slowly getting longer and longer. And so our sun is still currently up over in the west. So to get us to some nice dark skies, I'm going to just fast forward time here. Let the sun set over in the west. and bring us up to our dark skies. Now this went a little bit late into the night. Um, what we've done is we've gone late enough until the sun is far enough below the horizon that we're not getting any extra sunlight, any little bits of sun, of light from the sun. Um, so this is when we get to our fully dark night. Now, right now, uh, we don't have any planets that are really visible in the during sunset or the early evening. Uh, we will see some a little bit later in the night, but for now, let's just take a look at some stars and constellations that we can see. Now, the first few that I'm going to go over, um, if you've been to our shows before or you know constellations well, you will recognize these. Um, we always start off with looking at some constellations in the north. And we do this because for most of the northern hemisphere, these constellations are going to be up all year round. Um, and so they're always there. They're really good, therefore, kind of launching off point to search for other stars and constellations in the sky. So our first set of stars is more towards the northwest. Um, and it is this group of seven stars here. Uh, you may recognize this as our Big Dipper. Now, the Big Dipper itself is not a constellation. Um, it's an asterism. So that means it's a smaller, more recognizable group of stars that's part of a larger constellation. In this case, the bigger constellation is the Greek constellation of Ursa Major, or the Big Bear. So for the entire bear, you can see here that we're adding in some other stars. So the handle of the dipper is the tail of the bear. The cup of the Big Dipper is part of the back of the bear. And then we added in extra stars to make the legs, the chest, and the head of the bear. And I will turn on some nice little art to help help our imaginations a little bit to see this bear in our sky. So there we can see again, the handle is the tail, the cup is part of the body, 
and then our extra stars for our constellation that make up the rest of the bear. Now, of course, if we have a Big Dipper and a Big Bear, it makes sense that we must also have a Little Dipper and a Little Bear, right? Why call one big if there's not a little one in comparison? The Little Dipper is harder to find. Um, the stars aren't as bright, so that makes it, makes it a little bit more tricky. Um, but there is uh, a good way to find it. So you're going to start by finding the Big Dipper, which we already have. And then you're going to take the front two stars in the cup of the Big Dipper, because those are our pointer stars, and we're going to follow them as they point us across to this bright star here named Polaris. Now, Polaris is the end of the handle of the Little Dipper, which you can see here. So that is our trick to finding the North Star Polaris and our Little Dipper. You first find the Big Dipper, you find those pointer stars, and you follow them across to Polaris, our North Star, and you have then found the Little Dipper. Now, if you're having trouble with this, the other thing you can do is look for the giant in the sky and go up, and then you'll find Polaris. Um, now, as you can see, for our Little Dipper, um, the stars are much fainter. There are seven stars here, just like in the Big Dipper. Um, but usually you will see two to three of them unless you're in a super dark place and your eyes are really well dark adapted. Um, otherwise, you're not going to be able to see those other four stars in there because uh, they are quite dim. Our Little Dipper is also our Little Bear. No extra stars here. Again, the handle of the dipper is the tail of the bear, but this time the cup of the little dipper is the entire body of the little bear. Now, um, you may be looking at these two depictions of what are supposed to be bears and thinking to yourself, that doesn't look like a bear. And I'd agree with you. Um, if anything, uh, especially the little dipper, I think looks more like a squirrel, right? Big, long tail, tiny little body. Um, but there is actually an explanation, a story, for why these bears look so weird with their really long tails. Um, and this story, of course, comes from the Greeks, since these are Greek constellations. Um, Zeus had made friends with a woman named Callisto and her son Arcus. Um, but Zeus's wife Hera was jealous of their friendship, and so she turned um, Callisto into a bear. Um, and that left Argus without his mom, so Zeus decided to turn Argus into a bear, too, so that they could be together. I mean, they're bears, but at least they'll get to live together. Um, but he wanted to make sure that they were safe, so he decided to put them up in the night sky, where they wouldn't have to worry about hunters or people or anything like that. And, but to get them up into the sky, he picked them up by their stubby little bear tails, spun them around, and flung them into the night sky. And it was that process of being spun and flung by their tails that stretched out those bear tails. And so that's how we got two bears with unusually long tails up in the night sky. Now, around our two bears are a couple of other interesting things to look at. Um, now, this does require the use of a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, but on either side of the tail of the big bear, we have a couple of galaxies that we can see. So first off, right here off of uh, kind of the backside of the big bear's tail, in between it and the little bear, we have uh, what's known as the pinwheel galaxy. And through a pair of binoculars or a small telescope, you will see a beautiful spiral galaxy. Now this is similar to ours. Our galaxy, the Milky Way that we live in, is also a spiral galaxy like this. Um, but this one is beautiful. It's what we call face on, so you're able to really see those spiral arms in it. Um, and how much detail you'll be able to see will depend on how powerful your telescope is. So this is with about a six inch telescope, um, you would see something like this. 
it's it's stunning and I love it. Um, but there's another one of these hanging out nearby on the other side of the big bear's tail we have the whirlpool galaxy which looks a little something like this um i particularly love this one because you're getting two for one here because the whirlpool galaxy has a little companion next to it um, that little companion is actually a smaller galaxy that's in the process of merging with the big galaxy um, and that's why depending on again your telescope or if you're looking at images from like nasa you can sometimes see these like connection here where the stars are kind of streaming from the small galaxy to the big galaxy um let me see our picture doesn't have it on the wall very well but yes this is the penwell galaxy or sorry the whirlpool galaxy All right, um, two more constellations that I want to point out here in the north before we head to a different part of the sky. Um, if you are looking at your bears and you look down uh, a little bit more towards the horizon in the north, you're going to see a big W in the sky. And it does actually look like a W, right? There's our, our big W. Um, sometimes of year it looks like an E instead of a W, just depending on you know how the sky is oriented above us. But this is what we're looking for, and this is the Greek constellation of the Queen Cassiopeia. Now it does take a bit of imagination to turn a W into a queen, and depending on who you talk to and which artwork you're looking at, you're going to find lots of interpretations. Um, generally, she is depicted as sitting on her throne. Um, and so you can get kind of a view like this, where she's uh, sitting there on her throne in the night sky. And unlike our two bears, who were put in the sky um, as kind of a, a way to keep them safe and in kind of a, a place of honor by Zeus, um, our queen Cassiopeia here is actually in the night sky as a form of punishment. Because she so boldly declared that she was more beautiful than the goddess Aphrodite. And if you know Greek mythology, you don't do that. So her punishment is to stay chained up in the night sky. And she has to spend six months of the year upside down as part of her punishment. So depending on the time of year, we'll either see her upside down or right side up. Um, and yeah, that's, that's where our queen is. Now, one last constellation here in the north. This one sits in between or starts in between our two bears. Um, the easiest way to try and look for it is to go back to those pointer stars. And this time, as we're going to Polaris, you want to stop at the very first star you come across. And that is the tip of the tail of Draco the dragon. He's going to wind his way up around the bears and then back around until you get to his head here. Um, let me turn on the art so you can see it a little bit better. So there is our great dragon, Draco, uh, and he is currently in battle with another constellation who we will talk about in just a few minutes. But there is our northern sky. Um, a great place to start if you're learning the night sky, again, because these constellations and these stars are going to be up all year round. So they will always be there for you to take a look at. Okay, well, let's turn our attention to a different part of the sky. Uh, let's head over to the west, and I'm going to turn the sky for us so that you don't have to turn your head to look at this different part of sky. Uh, and I'm actually going to go a little bit further more towards the southwest. Here we go. All right. So right now in the spring, there are quite a few constellations that we can find with the help of the Big Dipper. 
Um, we already saw how we can find Draco and the little bear uh, with the Big Dipper. But for this next bit of star hopping, instead of using those pointer stars in the cup of the Big Dipper, we're going to use the handle. Now, you'll notice that the handle is curved or arced. So what you want to do is follow the arc of that handle across to this bright star here named Arcturus. And so that's the saying. From the Big Dipper, you follow the handle and you arc to Arcturus. And Arcturus is a very bright star, so you will see it no problem. It is one of the brighter stars in the night sky. Um, and it has another name. To the Lumi Native Americans, uh, the star Arcturus is actually known as Coyote's Eyeball. And it has one of my favorite stories associated with it. So Coyote was kind of minding his business, his own business one day, when he came across a group of pretty ladies and decided that he wanted to impress them. Now, I'm sure we each have our own ways that we would go about trying to impress someone. I guarantee you, you would not pick what Coyote did. Uh, Coyote decided the best way to impress these ladies was to pluck out his eyeballs and start juggling them. Yeah, I'm, I'm not quite sure what he was thinking. Um, but he starts juggling them. The ladies aren't reacting the way he wants, so he starts throwing them higher and higher, trying to look more and more impressive. But unfortunately for Coyote, he threw one of them just a little bit too high, and it got stuck where it now stays, up in the night sky, as the star that is also known as Arcturus. So that is Coyote's eyeball. Now, this star um, is a part of another Greek constellation. Um, it's part of the constellation of Bootes. Now, I'm going to draw it out for you um, because I, I kind of like using this one. I'm not going to say a Rorschach test, I guess, but more as a how good is your imagination, right? So this is the constellation of Bootes. Um, just think to yourselves for a minute, what do you think this could possibly be? And if you feel up for sharing, I'd love to hear it, but you do not have to. Um, but yeah, just, just think for a minute what you think the shape of the constellation Bootes would be. Now, one of the more common answers we get is a kite. And that kind of makes sense, right? We see, we can see a little kite there. Um, my personal favorite, I like an ice cream cone. I think it kind of looks like that. Um, makes a good, yeah, ice cream cone there. Um, we've heard a couple of other really fun ones. We had uh, a kid here about a month ago who thought it looked like one of those giant turkey legs that you get at like the fair. Um, my husband thinks it looks like the Pokemon will buff it, if anyone is a Pokemon fan. Um, here's what it actually is. Um, Bootes is a man. And I still don't quite understand it. Um, in my head, this man is now shaped like Kingpin from Into the Spider-Verse with the super wide shoulders and teeny tiny little hips and legs. Um, but yeah, yeah, Bootes is supposed to be a man. Um, he's sometimes called the bear herder because he kind of helps to uh, herd our two bears across the sky and keeping them safe up there. Um, now, from here, we can do some more star hopping. Now, remember, to get to Arcturus and Bootes, we started at the Big Dipper where we followed that handle and we arced to Arcturus. Well, our next jumping that we're going to do is starting from Arcturus, we're going to spike down to this bright star here named Spica. So again, from Arcturus, we spike to Spica. 
Spica is another bright star that you will easily see up in the night sky. And it's also the brightest star in the constellation of Virgo the Maiden. Now, I kind of picture Spica um, as like her hand on her hip. And then we have like her body and her legs. Um, she'll have like one hand and then another hand coming up. Um, I'll show you the art, uh, which is a little bit different than how I typically picture her. Um, this is, again, with a lot of constellations, there is no one correct way to connect the dots to make the constellation. There is no one correct artistic interpretation um, of what the constellations are. Um, and so you will see lots of variations as people have tried to connect the dots and make constellations make sense. Because as you saw with Bootes, Sometimes they require a lot of imagination and a lot of creative thinking to figure that out. Um, but this is Virgo, our maiden. Um, she actually has another one of my favorite stories. Um, so her name is actually Persephone, and she was the daughter of the goddess Demeter. Now, Demeter, she is the goddess of the harvest. So she's Part of her responsibility is um, controlling weather to make the weather favorable for farming and growing produce and stuff. Um, now, Persephone was beautiful. And the moment Hades first laid eyes on her, he fell in love and decided that she needed to be his queen. Um, now, he didn't go about this a good way. Um, he decided to kidnap her and bring her down to the underworld. Um, where she was now trapped. Um, now, Demeter, Persephone's mom, heard about this, very angry, stormed down to the underworld, confronted Hades, tried to get her daughter back. Hades kept denying, no, 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 you're not going to take her back. Um, and in this whole time that they were fighting, um, Persephone ate some pomegranate seeds. And this is important because once you eat in the underworld, you now belong there you can't leave. Um, and that was kind of the plan. So she was actually stuck there now, but Demeter wasn't going to have it. So she got Zeus involved and he ended up forcing a compromise where uh, Persephone spends half the year with her mother and half the year down in the underworld with Hades. So for the six months of the year that we see her up in our night sky, that's when she's up on earth with her mom. Her mom is happy and because she's happy, we get happy weather. Um, so nice, warm weather. Um, and then for the six months of the year that the constellation is below our horizon and we can't see it, that's when Persephone is down in the underworld. Um, her mom is cold and unhappy and upset. So we get bad weather, cold weather during that time. Um, and so that is the story of Persephone and how the Greeks explained the changing of the seasons and the seasonal variation of, you know, the weather, which I think is really fun. All right, uh, let's head over now to the southeast for a few more constellations. All right. Um, for our next one, we're actually going to go back up to Arcturus and Bootes. And instead of spiking down to Spica, we're actually going to look just to the east of our man up there uh, next to Bootes, where you'll see kind of a backward C shape. Um, this backward C is Corona Borealis, or the Northern Crown. Um, this one, I think, does look pretty decent. Like, you can definitely imagine a tiara there with each of the stars being like a jewel on the crown. And the brightest star here, um, which I need to add a label for, um, but that brightest star is actually named Gemma, and that's where we get our term gem from, uh, is from the name of that star. Um, but from here, we now want to find Hercules. Hercules is sitting right next to our crown, right in between our crown, and our uh, Draco the dragon right over there in the east. Uh, so Hercules could be found right here. 
uh, he is looks a little awkward in the sky. Um, it's not because he's flailing, it's because he's doing some awesome ninja rolls and moves because he's the one who is fighting Draco the Dragon. Now, um, you may be familiar with the name Hercules and maybe even with his story, um, but the kind of short version is he was tasked with completing these 12 trials, um, these 12 labors to prove that he's a good person. And one of these tasks is to retrieve a golden apple from one very special tree. Uh, but that tree is guarded by Draco the dragon. And so the scene we're seeing play out right now is the two of them fighting as Hercules is trying to get to that tree, get to that apple, and complete one of his 12 labors. Now, a lot of other constellations that we can find in the sky throughout the year are also part of the Hercules story. Um, but for right now, um, Draco is the only one that's up and easy to find for our given location at this time of year. Um, but now you know how to find our great hero. All right. So this has been what we can see up in the sky tonight, mostly. Um, as we go throughout June, it's going to look very similar to this. You're not going to see a lot of changes in what's visible. Um, the one thing you will notice is over in the west, those constellations will start to get a little bit lower towards the end of the month, while constellations over in the east, which are going to be our summer constellations, because that's coming up real soon, uh, are going to be getting higher and higher up over in the east. Um, but the other thing you'll notice uh, throughout the month is some planets peeking out. Um, so I'm going to go a little bit further let me turn on our planet labels here. Go a little bit further into the evening. Because showing up later in the evening um, are our first two planets that are visible, Saturn and Neptune. Um, so they're going to show up and be easy to see around 3, 3.30 a.m., um, and they'll be more and more, they'll be visible earlier in the night as we get later in the month, so closer to midnight by the time we get to the end of the month. Um, Saturn, you can see with just your eye. You do not have to have a telescope for it. Neptune, you do have to have either a pair of binoculars or a telescope to see that one. Um, but then you can also see not much later. Uh, we also get Mars peeking out. Over in the east, coming up right now, again, around 4 a.m., but being visible earlier in the night as we get later in the month. And then just before the sun comes up, we get a few more constellations. Let me turn these clouds down so we can see there are a few more um, planets. Uh, Uranus and Jupiter are going to slowly start peeking out earlier and earlier in the dawn, more pre-morning sky. Um, Mercury is actually not really going to be visible for much longer. It's only going to hang around there for a couple more days before it gets too close to the sun for us to see. But don't worry, if you want to see Mercury later in the month, um, he will start peeking out in the west right after sunset at the end of the month. So he'll be coming back in a few weeks. Um, but for most of June, uh, we're not really going to be able to see Mercury. Um, and then our moon, right now we're right near a new moon. Um, our next full moon is going to come um, on June 21st. Um, so if you enjoy the full moon, you've got a few weeks before that comes out. Uh, and then, of course, the other big astronomical event that we have for this month is our summer solstice happening on June 20th. So now that is the day where the sun gets the highest in the sky. It's up for the longest period of time. And so we get our longest day uh, throughout the year. And of course, for us here in the Northern Hemisphere, this June solstice marks the beginning of summer. Um, so summer will start uh, later this month. I don't think I'm quite ready for it. I've been enjoying the cooler weather we've had for the past several weeks. Um, today was a little bit too warm for my taste, but it's fine.
Um, and yeah, so that's gonna bring us back into the daytime um, and to the end of our show. Um, so I'm going to turn our lights up here and see if there are any questions. No? All right, well, before you head out, uh, there are some star charts out on the table in front of the TV um, at the main entrance. Please feel free to take one of these. Um, they can help you find the stars and constellations we talked about in addition to some others. It's got the planets on there, got the solstice information on there, all of that. Um, so thank you so much for coming out. Uh, if you do have any questions, I will be back here. You can come uh, talk to me. Otherwise, have a safe trip home. Hopefully the storms have stopped. Um, and yeah, have a wonderful rest of your week. Yeah. Ah, give me one second.